going on with you. I want you to mute your distractions, mute your phone. I mean, don't mute your laptop, otherwise you can't hear us. Uh, but maybe mute your kids, mute your husband and wife. <laughs> and if you learn how to mute your husband and your kids, please drop me a DM because I'd love to know how you do it. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on the fantastic Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Sana, how are you? Good. It's so good to have you back. And in case anyone's wondered, you know, watching and wondering, um, oh yeah, Brendan, nice. And first time, actually, this is uh, Brendan's second time here on Supercharge Fridays. So if you go to LinkedIn and write Brendan, B-R-E-N-D-E-N and hashtag Supercharge Fridays, you're going to see we did a session back in the summer and Brendan, the topic was a bit different. It was more presentation skills, how to present with confidence, right? Absolutely. Last time we talked about public speaking technique. Public speaking techniques. Today's going to be a little bit different. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So Brendan, in case someone's watching us for the very first time and doesn't really know who you are, tell us a little bit about your backstory. Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. My name is Brendan Korosami. I'm the founder of Master Talk. Master Talk is a YouTube channel that I started to help the world mess with the art of communication and public speaking. And Master Talk is also a coaching practice where I coach ambitious executives and entrepreneurs to become top 1% communicators in their industries. And the way that I got started, so now similar to how you know you were in the NCAD world, in the MBA world, I was similar. I went to business school and I wanted to work at McKinsey or IBM or Deloitte and all these big companies. So a lot of that experience that I developed in interviews came from my consulting prep when I was in university. I did these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports for nerds. That's why I developed the expertise uh, to coach and, and start my own business on communication and public speaking. And the rest is history. <laughs> Fantastic. I want to say hello to our friends watching us from around the world. Lovely of you guys joining us, particularly for some of you, it's early morning like Kevin. So really appreciate it. So Brendan, we've got um, a few, I think the best way, because this is such a huge topic, right? We could talk for three hours and it would still not be enough. So we're going to abridge this today. And um, one of the best ways to do it is attack the most common sort of questions that we typically get in interviews and how do we get better and better at them. And I'm guessing, Brendan, it's never a one-time thing. We do it once in front of the mirror and you know we're breezing, we're smooth. It takes, it takes a lot of practice, right? You're absolutely correct, Sonal. And just as a principle to help people, I think what a lot of candidates miss is the idea that they could just walk into an interview, be asked a question, and just respond as if they're having a casual coffee conversation and expect to get a job offer at the end of that interview. And I think that's the biggest mistake you can make because what the top 1% candidates on the market are doing is they're writing out their answers in advance with structure. They're practicing it a bunch of times with either a career coach or, or speaking coach or other people in their in their group, in their MBA class, in their classroom. And they're making sure every single thing that comes out of their mouth is yeah. always selling themselves indirectly whenever yeah. they're applying for a job. So it's important to keep that in mind. It's important to keep that in mind. And Brendan, what would you say to this person who's watching us right now? Maybe just a teeny weeny bit cynical. And what they're saying is, yeah, I don't want to do that because I flow very well when I'm, you know, uh, on the fly and writing stuff down, in fact, might do the opposite. And it might make me more nervous because I feel like I have to stri stick to a script. Do you know what I mean? What would you Absolutely. say to that person? Right. So, so the way that it's a great question, the way that I think about this so now is you start word for word and then you improvise. Because yeah. here's the problem of not writing it down, going on the fly. You could give yeah. a regular presentation at work sometimes yeah. that way and get away with it. But in an interview, every candidate has the same amount of time, whether it's 30 minutes, whether it's 45 minutes, whether it's an hour, it doesn't matter. But because everyone's given the same time frame, if you're up against a candidate who has already thought in advance how that entire interview is going to play out and what they're going to say, they're going to beat you. And the other thing that's very important to emphasize is the people who speak on the fly in interviews generally aren't able to quantify their accomplishments enough because they'll forget all of the numbers and the details. Whereas the person who prepped or wrote everything, it just sounds way better, way cleaner and hits all the results that that position is looking for. Okay. So anybody who's been cynical, stop being cynical. You got some two, three really good reasons on why preparation is key. And 
we are both it just so happens we both very active on youtube right brendan so i can't watch a channel where someone is rambling like i don't have time for that so if you've got your script sorted like i mean i'm guessing uh, brendan how you do it but in my case it's bullet points so i know what i'm going to say next and when i say that i sometimes get stories that i had not prepped like they just came that's great but the base you're saying has to be strong correct I, i think everyone's got their approach like for me on my youtube channel what i do and i love your thought process is i actually script everything word for word like everything Ooh. is detailed out okay. but but here's the nuance i don't communicate it in the video word for word so mm-hmm. i look at the script and all the things written i look i read it and then i just go and if the script's different than what i say it's totally fun because i know what the general idea is you ha- you know the general idea and uh, one thing that is good about what you said and i don't do it uh, uh, admittedly is when you have your original thoughts and you pen them down you have certain vocabulary which you had because you were more thoughtful you had certain word choice of words which may or may not be there when you're doing it on the fly so another good reason uh, to to think about scripting things down so fantastic and if anyone has not heard of brendan i highly recommend you follow brendan on linkedin he is giving us his time for free i know brendan is one of the top coaches out there on all things communication so you're getting a lot for free i mean it like this is g- gems that he's going to be dropping so please do a couple of things for us tag a couple of friends in the comments that you think should be watching us um on linkedin because i think this would help i want this to help as many people as possible right and second give us obviously your likes and your hearts those little fuels i used to be a little embarrassed to ask fun to upon a time now i'm like listen you're getting so much value that is like with pleasure we will receive your gratitude and you know share this post with your friends like right now and if you're watching us on the replay please put hashtag replay so fantastic so brendan we're going to get cracking with the very first question that comes up and trips up many people and i'm going to ask you for your structure how you handle it and i also want to ask you i'm being a bit greedy i also want to ask you because some people say this is your pitch your elevator pitch do you agree do you disagree i want to know everything absolutely so so let me start with those great questions is is the idea that everyone every career coach every coach like i'm not a career coach personally everyone's got their own structure their own way of doing things but what i will say is it doesn't take that much to stand out and i'll give you the context for today's examples when i was when i went through in the interview process is around 3 years ago i applied for a consulting division job consulting is one of the most competitive jobs in the world where you're up against hundreds of candidates if you want to work at mckinsey or boston consulting yes. group or bain and company these are the propellers to get jobs in the c suite later on in life so this is what i prepped for essentially it was kind of like a war that you're going up against all these other candidates and in that specific industry what you always want to think about with tell me about yourself the first thing regardless of the question is ask yourself who is the ideal candidate that already has the position you want and why did they hire that individual break okay. that person down what are the three main qualities that person has and then you tailor the answers back into every question that you I'm just going to repeat what you said you want to look around and find that particular candidate who has gone through the hoops already and is where you want to be and are you saying you sort of like open it up and and understand what is it that helped them to get there Yes and I'll give you a very specific example as well because I'll I'll speak on on in the industry I was in which is very similar to anyone who's interviewing for a service based role anyways which is in consulting what they're mainly looking for there's a couple of things let's sum, simmer it down to three number 1 is if you're speaking in an interview the manager the senior executive who's listening to you is asking your, themselves the most important question which is if i put this person in front of a million dollar account what how what would happen And if that person is stumbling going um hi sonal um really excited for this interview the manager is thinking oh my god i don't want to put this person in front of a client that i spent yeah. years building a relationship that's one yeah number 2 is what is the cultural fit of this individual on a team and what the best candidates are able to do is when they're having a conversation they make the interviewer feel like their colleagues wow does this person already work here i feel like i already had lunch with this person Oh, he doesn't have a job offer. She doesn't have a job offer. Let's just fix that. That's the other piece is the cultural fit. 
And then the third piece that consultants are always looking for is their ability to understand the rule, but also the structure and how they present ideas. Structure is everything when you're presenting ideas in a service-based role. So if your answers are all over the place, oh, so no, uh, 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 I guess I did this and this, people have less confidence with you in front of clients. And e, I mean, everything, 100% agree with what you just said. And, and another thing uh, is, this is our chance to make a great impression and we don't get a lot of chances. This is our first, like chances are the moment we've opened up our mouth, it's to answer this question. (laughs) So we want to make every breath, every syllable, every word count. So I'm going back to what you said. I feel like scripting, especially this answer will be so helpful. So Fantastic, Brendan. So help us with this question. So um, should we do a, like a, should I ask you, tell me about yourself or because actually we've already been through that because you already introduced yourself. So tell us about how you approach this one. No, no, no absolutely. So so here's here's what I would love everyone to do is what me yeah. and Sonal are going to do is Sonal is going to ask me, tell me about yourself. And I'm going to be a candidate interviewing for IBM. Right? Let's, have, let's have interviewing for IBM's consulting. And I want you in the chat to vote for who you're going to hire. Are you going to hire candidate A or candidate B. Okay, so, you're going to give us both A and B. Oh, great. Okay, Brendan, we're going to go and start with first of all, is everyone ready? Give us thumbs up in the comments. Are you ready? Listen, what did I say about distractions? <laughs> Close Instagram right now. <laughs> okay. Brendan, you are candidate number A. So, Brendan, it's really good to meet you. Um I'm excited about this interview. So, tell me something about yourself. Yeah, for sure, Sonala. It's great to be here. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just a little bit nervous. Um, so, hey, uh, hi, Sonal. Uh, my name is Brendan. Um, I live in Montreal. Um, uh, you know, I, I really like IBM as a company, and I'm really looking forward to it. I worked at PwC, and um, I, also did, <laughs> I also did a lot of volunteering, and I have over um, five years of experience in... Uh, and leadership management and i'm really looking forward to entering for the for the organization okay now listen i'm a professional so i'm not going to say anything what i would like to do is please give us one to two things poke holes brendan's not going to mind he's a big boy poke holes on what it is that you took away i don't want you to say this is bad this is, just poke holes in it what didn't you like about it just be objective okay we're gonna see what they're saying in the comments um brendan this just takes 15 to 20 seconds like a little bit of a delay um and while we're waiting for them to say that in the comments which i'm looking forward to what they're gonna say i saw a question here already i'm gonna answer it quickly because we're gonna get cracking anjali you can definitely stand out as a fresh graduate a hundred percent there's a reason some graduates have a better start in life compared to the others. They did something right. So it's not like it's a level playing field. Do you agree, Brendan? I completely agree, Anjali. I, I, I always find that companies are always looking for fresh young talent because those are the people that are willing to work the hardest. Those are the people who, who don't have any other commitments in their life. They want to take their career seriously. You just got to pick the right organization. Yes, exactly. And and uh, I'm going to say hi to our friend Rishav here who was on Supercharge Fridays and he completely agrees with us as well. And I got a bit delayed starting today. I want to say happy to share to anyone who's out there who's like celebrating. And if you don't know what it is, it's a kind of an important festival, particularly for those of Asi- Indian or Asian uh, origin. It's the victory of good over evil, which is, which is fantastic. So happy to share to everyone. All right. So let's see. A little casual, Brandon. You were a bit casual with us today. You didn't come across as very prepared. The flow wasn't there, right? I mean, your cough just threw me off. <laughs> I'm kidding. But it it does distract, right? We don't need um, any distractions out there. You didn't come across necessarily as confident, slightly underprepared. Uh, confident is coming, casual approach. A lot of that is coming across. Matthew, hey, Matthew, this is a new friend in South Africa. The message didn't even come across because of the fact that it was zero confidence. It's so sad that you could be the most suitable candidate, Brendan, right? When I say you, I'm looking at every one of us who's watching us today live and the delivery is lacking. It's such a pity that they write you off. Right. Um, and what do you want to tell us about what do you want to tell us about your approach? 
Absolutely. And, and what I would say is I, I'm actually a bit more cynical than you are. So now where I say they should write you off. Especially if yeah. you're interviewing yeah. for a service-based role, because as a manager, it's always important to be empathetic, right? To how the company, because the, if, if the company is giving you money, there's an expectation of value that you need to return that is more than the sum of money they're giving you. Sure. So you need to make sure that you're over delivering on those answers. The other piece I'll say is why tell me about yourself is so important is because as human beings, the way that we communicate, the way that we are is we're flawed creatures. We have this thing called confirmation bias, which is I'm going to make a judgment about you in the first five minutes of our interaction, the first 62 minutes. So based on tell me about yourself, I'm either going to invent stories for the rest of the interview as to why I should hire you. Oh, so I made the small mistake here. It doesn't matter. She's amazing. It doesn't matter. But the opposite is also true. If we don't like the other candidate, we're going to invent stories the entire interview as to why we shouldn't hire that person based on that one answer. Uh, exactly. And another tragedy, Brendan, with what you just said is, let's say you're one of those people, right? Let's say some of us watching today, we are not a Ferrari, which is, what is, what is it? Zero to 60 in five seconds. Maybe some of us warm up. And then you're going to be fantastic maybe in 20 minutes. The problem is the halo effect or the lack of it, like you said, the confirmation, by the, the bias is already there and they've mentally switched off. So chances are they're already distracted and they're thinking about what they're going to make for dinner today. So you could be giving fantastic answers at a later stage, but it doesn't take 30 minutes for them to realize maybe that, yes, we're flawed. Yes, it's not perfect, but this is the way it is. Okay. And now we're going to switch it over to candidate number B, like B for Brendan. So I'm, I'm thinking this one's going to like, you know, hit it out of the park. So be prepared with your notes in the comments. Tell us what it is that you're going to notice about Brendan's second approach. So Brendan, let's go. Brendan, tell me something about yourself. Maybe something about yourself that's not on your resume. I'd love to know. Hey, absolutely. So now it's such a pleasure to meet you. And I'm really excited for, for this interview and this opportunity. So, of course, my name is Brian Kumar Sami. There's one thing that you remember from this interview is that I help others achieve rocket ship level success. And there's three key experiences in my life that have helped driven this passion that I have for helping others. Number one was my experience at PricewaterhouseCoopers, where I helped chief financial officers and financial regulators improve the way that report on sustainable ESG gas emissions and really help those individuals to make sure that their regulations are well reported and well documented. It was such a pleasure working at Price. Number two is my experience volunteering during my university career for the John Molson Case Competition Committee, where I trained 26 individuals on how to speak exceptionally well to senior level executives. And it was in that moment that I found such a love and a passion for developing leaders to get their future career and job offers. And finally, number three, which is my volunteering experience as well, when I helped the founder of Charity Water, Scott Harrison, raise ten to $15,000 to help people across the world gain access to clean drinking water. And it was through these three key experiences that really led me to pursue a role within IBM's consulting division because I love working with clients. I love helping other people achieve success. And I'm very much looking forward to this opportunity to see how I can be a better value for this organization and for our clients. Okay. Love it. Love it. I'm going to wait before I give my own opinion on it. But I want to see what people will tell us in the comments and while you guys are doing that oh, we have someone from IBM <laughs> she's like yeah 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 <laughs> well good good stuff I saw a, a comment here that um, I wanted to um, highlight scripting and practicing is key because there's such a big difference in A and B right like Risto says um, there was also one thing that others didn't say uh, which was pauses a lot of pauses right uh, which come from sometimes incoherent. And Chandrasekhar, you're very right. I don't think there's anything wrong with coughing. I mean, you're a human being. You're breathing. You're coughing. My opinion of it was it felt like a nervous cough. Do you know what I mean, Brendan? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like, a, 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 a you know, obviously something that's bothering or itching, itching your throat. Hey, Shubham, this is exactly what we're here for. So stick around, take notes, um, because that's what we're doing with our guests. All right, so let's see what our, um, yes, let's see what the comments are. I saw something on the power of three. 
I also love the power of three. I'm a huge fan of the three-legged stool. Confidence, rocket speech, quantified examples. Prep, the, you could tell the preparation. Numbers always help. Numbers are memorable. There was a story there as well. That also helps. This person is well prepared. They know their stuff. Hired. <laughs> Mic drop. You're hired. Um, definitely threw it out of the park. I did think the pleasantries were missing in the first one as well. Because... Why is he is here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Confidence and clarity. Um, yeah, engaging. And uh, I also liked one thing that you said, Brendan, which um, I don't normally hear this. If there's one thing you started off with, if there's one thing I want you to remember, it's this. And that's what you said. So break this up, dissect this um, candidate number B for us, his approach. Absolutely. So once again, no correct approach, but the way that I've approached it when I thought about, and it's always going to be individualistic or customized rather to the role that you're applying for. So for me, I really wanted a job in consulting. So it's really important in my tell me about yourself to really focus on this idea that I love helping others. Because at the end of the day, when you're a consultant at an IBM, at a McKinsey, all you're doing is serving clients, you're serving stakeholders. Yep. So it was important for me to tell that specific story. Yep. That's one piece. The other piece is the power of three, the structure, right? People, human beings remember in threes. Two is not enough. One is not enough to sell you and anything above three. One is lonely. One is yeah, lonely. One is lonely. Or just two. I also, yeah, prime numbers. <laughs> yeah, you do. All right. I love that. That's that's a great way of explaining it too. And then I wanted to quantify the the absolute best things on my CV to make sure the cream at the top is exactly what comes out at the beginning. But the third piece, and I'd love for all of you to comment in the chat, is how many times do you think I prepared and tried and practiced okay. just that one Okay, give question. us a number in the comments. How many times do you think Brendan practiced this till he sounded like this today? Put it in the comments. Quick, move your fingers. Let's get cracking. And while you're doing that, also I wanted to say something. Um, yeah, nice intro. Exactly. Um, it just felt... It's interesting, even when you slow down, Brendan, it sounds confident, right? When I feel like sometimes when a candidate is really, really good, but they're speaking a bit fast, um, it also throws off, you know, throw, throws the person off. And while you're writing the number down, please put it in the comments. One thing I want to say is today you're getting two for one, actually. You're not just talking about delivery. We're also talking about content, which I love. So, Brendan, I heard you say this in the beginning, and I'm going to say this again. You chose those three things because you know they matter to the company. They were not random three accomplishments or three descriptions about you, correct? Which means you Excellent. did massive research on the company. Absolutely. And yeah. and and just to speed things up as well, for those who are wondering what that number is. Yeah, I I'm, I'm uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I, I've got it. I got it. Seven, <laughs> 10, 20, 10. What is it, Brendan? Nine. 200. The number is 200. Oh. So no. You, there is no way anyone could have got, guessed it. Noor, right. five times, five times he must have sounded like the no, candidate no. number A. <laughs> so, and, it, oh my God. Yeah, literally 200 times. Like, just so people understand this, this is how obsessed I was in university. My interview process for IBM was in September 2018. I started preparing for my interview in April 2018. So I prepared five months for that interview. I had people grill me. And say, okay, Brent, I don't like this point. We got to change this, do that. Until when I got to the interview, there was no question. There was no doubt in the interviewer's mind that all of the senior executives were like, this guy needs to get a job here, right? That's the key. And yeah. this is the best part for all of you as we get to the other questions as well. Is you know what the best part about interviewing? Is that the top 1% candidates aren't interviewing against you. They already have jobs. You're not up against me in a job. I got my own business now. I don't interview for jobs. But that's the magic. Imagine if you did it 200 times. There is no candidate that will even come remotely close. It's just most people aren't willing to put in the grace. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. Fantastic, guys. If it takes Brendan 200 times, it it'll take us at least that much time, right? So it's definitely worth getting this one right. And I highly recommend you watch the replay. Brendan... So why should we hire you? Let's do this. Candidate A and candidate B. And we're not going to uh, like go into the feedback and responses in order, you know, just in the interest of time. But Brendan, 
I want to hear about this from you. So let's start with candidate A. Brandon, why should we hire you? Yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, question. Why, why should you hire me? Um, you know, I, I, I really think IBM is a great company, and I, I really think that I would be uh, a great candidate for this <laughs> opportunity because, you know, uh, I've I've worked at Pricewater, you know, House Cooper. I've I've worked with uh, companies in, uh, you know, like I, I just think that I just think that I'd be a really good fit for this role. And there's a lot of great things about this company. I really love consulting. I love to work here. Okay, and my first reaction is there something funny? <laughs> I, I'm just laughing at my own answer. It's so bad. It's so, hard <laughs> so, to... chuckle. so obviously, Brendan, what I'm guessing is this was all about you. It was less about the company. What else? What else do you want to share with us about that? As, absolutely. And it, and it shows that the candidate didn't even think about the question. Yeah. You were caught off guard, right? A little right, bit. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Did I just get asked that question? Yeah. <laughs> and it's the most common one. Right. And um, it was also very, again, a little bit casual. Um, and you didn't necessarily, you don't, you didn't come across as hungry either, right? So what we want to do instead is how candidate B, B for Brendan, is going to say this answer. So Brendan, go for it. Right. So candidate B would sound a little something more like this. I'm sure there are a lot of incredible individuals who are applying for this role. And I believe that the reason I would also be a fit for this amazing opportunity at IBM is because I'm passionate about helping others achieve rocket ship level success. From my years in university, I had the opportunity to work in professional services. I priced Waterhouse Coopers and many different organizations. I believe that I can take that experience and help the incredible clients within this organization. Number two is the ability to work together as a team to achieve great results. And what's amazing within consulting is we're all working together as a unit, cross departments from the technical teams to the functional teams so that we can deliver not just business results from a sales perspective at IBM, but also delivery results. Once we have the company, once we have the client, then how can we deliver exceptionally well by working together as a team? And from my experiences, I've have multiple years of working together with exceptionally talented teams so that we can deliver the best results possible. And I believe I'd be a great addition to this team as well. And finally, number three, the people. I had the exceptional opportunity of meeting so many great IBMers across my application process. And I believe that I'm a great cultural fit. IBMers are individuals who are generous, they're kind, they love helping other people, and they always go out of their way to bring value to other members of the team. And I believe I have those same values as well. Okay, fantastic. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Obviously, this was turned around. This was more about them. This was less about you. Power of three, very important. You practiced this, what, 300 times? <laughs> this one, I'll be honest, probably more like a 20 times. Because I, I kind of forgot what I said three years ago, but it kind of gives you an idea of what I said. But the tell me about yourself was exactly what I said three years ago. Yeah. No, no, that's re that's really, really good. Because it's the exact opposite of what Govind is saying earlier. You didn't really know about the company. And to say something like, I'm a good, I'm a good culture fit, like with the work ethic and the way you serve your clients, that obviously means you know something about the company. And the company's like, we've got to hire this person. Right. And um, one very common mistake I see, Brendan, is the candidate A, the answer to this one, candidate A actually answered the other way. Do you know what I mean? Like it was the other way around. It was less about, um, you know, this is we. So your answer had a lot of we in it. Like you're already giving this Jedi mind trick that we're already working together. Correct. Yeah. Which is a uh, magical and I talk about the Jedi mind trick a lot. So this is really, really good. And now let's go with the third one. So like IBM is asking you this, right? And I'm sure you prepared this. Why do you want to, I mean, they're kind of similar in a way, Brendan, these two questions, but let's uh, see your point of view. Why do you want to work for us? Let's go with the candidate B directly. Oh, candidate B directly. Sure. I was about to go to candidate A. Anyways, so so candidate A already got eliminated in the process. So those were wondering why. So now went to nobody candidate. has the patience to go with third question. They're like already checked out. 
<laughs> so Canada B with why do you want to work with us would sound something like this. The reason why I would love to work at IBM, there's one word, it's the people. Mm. I had the opportunity to meet dozens of IBMers during my application process. And I have never seen a team that is so energetic, so interested in helping students thrive. And their ability to treat candidates like rock stars is a signal to me that the people that you end up hiring, you treat them even more than rock stars. And I love individuals on a team who strive that extra mile. And that's the main reason why I want to work at IBM. I want to join this incredible team of like-minded individuals who care about developing leaders within the company, who care about helping the people in the organization get to the next level of where they want to go. And I believe that I can also bring my leadership skills and my time within university, helping dozens of students with their development as leaders within IBM as well. Okay, good. I want to just compare. So what were you like, I want to compare now. What were, what would candidate A have said? <laughs> well, because know. actually maybe we're doing that today without realizing. Absolutely. And and the other piece as well that, that I forgot to say for candidate B that I'll add is yeah. one thing I also said in the interview, it was uh, two, three years ago when I started working there. I also quoted Ginny Rometty, who is the ex-CEO yes. of IBM. Yes. And she has a quote that says, growth and comfort cannot coexist. Yes. And I love the learning environment. So I commented on that for IBM as well. But candidate A, he, he would sound something more like this, you know, uh, why do you want to work for us? Well, you know, IBM is a great company. They're very vague in the yeah. details of how they explain really? something versus yeah. the specificity, the detail. And they don't comment at all on the people. Because at the end of the day, everyone, especially in consulting, the difference between IBM and Accenture and a Deloitte from a work perspective is absolutely nothing. You're doing the same work all around. The only difference is the people you're working with. So that's really what you want to hit a bullseye on. Yes. I know. I love that. Um, great quote by Ginny Rometish, one of my favorite people. And she's somebody I quoted on a YouTube video who does not, this is somebody who does not have an MBA and, and is insanely successful because there was a lot of like pros and cons for MBA. And, and she's a poster child for me for that. Um, and also when you quote the CEO of the company, during the interview so you obviously you know you come across as someone who's done their homework and the third thing I really love is Brendan what you just said let's say you know you've given an answer it's polished it's perfect and you just said oh I've by the way I forgot to add I like that it's never too late this could have been a real life interview and you're done and we look like we're done and dusted we're about to you know do the greetings and say goodbye like have you ever done that, Brendan? Because I have. Oh, I, I. By the way, I forgot to mention. You know, like you don't. You don't want to kick yourself later. But what is your opinion on that? I I completely agree. So so it's always about, and this is why my biggest my other recommendation for interviews. You really want to get to know the culture at the company. So in my case, and I'll give very specific example. I made it to the final round for IBM, and you know I was with a bunch of senior executives. But at that point, they already wanted to hire me. So the only thing that I could do is really mess it up by being too perfect. So what happened is at the beginning, I did my usual. And then they started attacking me on purpose. They went into a really hard question. They were like, well, what about this? What about this? So when they started asking questions, I obviously didn't prepare for it because they, they, they threw curveballs on purpose. So I just said, you know, I started being a lot more casual then because at that point I already showed what I was capable of. So I said, well, let me think about that for a minute, or let me take a little bit of time to think about it. I think that's totally fine. The only questions you don't want to say that is the questions you should have prepared. But if they ask you curveballs, it's perfectly okay to say those things. It makes you a bit more human. And I yes. definitely recommend that doing 10% of the time. Yes, 10% of the time. All right, fantastic. And one more thing I want to re recap for our viewer right now is specific versus vague. Vague is not your friend when it comes to answers to important questions like this. Specific is your friend always. The devil is in, I don't like, people say the devil is in the details. Your angel, your angel friend is in the details and you want to get into those details. So this is really, really good. And I, I have a very quick question here from Iris. <clears throat> and Iris is like, is it true that tell me about yourself is such an important part of the interview that they make? A decision to hire you based on that i don't know what you think about that uh, i'd love to get your thoughts on this too yeah iris um 
I wouldn't necessarily say that it's the most, but it does matter a lot because it's less about them. It's more about you. You set the tone from the very first question. Let's say you do something wrong. You go down this downward spiral the rest of the time. But if you do something great and you have like you give candidate B answer to what like just like what Brendan did. Right. You have such a good feeling. It can only get better. So I feel like your mind works for you and against you and and, or or against you. And and it comes down to starting right. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I I completely agree. The, The other thing I would add to that is to your point. Tell me about yourself is the key to everything else and i'll be honest because i've interviewed many candidates yes. as well at ibm with the years yes. after that i worked there and trust me every time somebody had a bad tell me about yourself in my head already shut them off as a candidate well, I was you're, like, human. No. you're human right. Yeah. Right. i would never put this person in front of a client so it doesn't really matter what they say after and and we and we, we didn't end up hiring any of those people versus the people who had very structured i was like oh i need to pay attention to this this is the person i've been waiting for all day when the person was more structured you felt like I need to pay attention to this person. I've been waiting for this person all day. Wow. Love it. Love it. Love it. Fantastic. So Kush, this is a really great point. You keep doing it till you're hundred percent satisfied. And like, I would even say delighted because satisfaction is like satisfactory, right? Delighted is like, I did it. Like, I know you train lots of people. I know you trained a friend of mine and, and I don't know how long she practiced the story that she has what? till she, Lauren, like till she's like, like I, I mean, every eye movement, like every breath, every pause is thought through and intentional. I, I mean, Brendan, I'm sure it feels a little silly when we are going through 200 iterations. I don't know. What, what do you think about that? We got to love the process. But what do you think about like help someone who's thinking and like, oh, 200 I can't even do it for 50 like walk us through your um, process on that absolutely so so the one thing I want to emphasize is 200 because 200 is not exaggeration so in case people are wondering but you have to also keep in mind I said it over a span of five months not five days yes right because I started in April and I interviewed in September October so five months later so that means I was probably doing it 40 times a month which actually isn't that bad because tell me about yourself is a 60 to 90 second answer people right so it's not like a very challenging oh I have to do this 200 times 200 times is literally three hours of practice if you really think about it three or four right? Lawrence with the comments she's like I wanted to kill my, <laughs> my presentation I wanted to kill Brendan <laughs> and me <laughs> ah, it was so it was so worth it Lauren <laughs> Right now, now she's a rock star. And, yeah, and she's a rock star. And by the way, you're so right. I think she's been doing this for months. So anyone who's like 200 times in one day, like you're gonna drive yourself insane. You gotta pace yourself, right? It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It could be five months. It could be five weeks. But if you measure it, you're, you, what you said was 40 times a month. That's not so bad. That's not totally at all. Yeah. Not at all. And no. you have to always ask yourself, right? How badly do you want this job? Yes. Right. Because remember, like this is the way I always think about it when I interviewed. I don't interview anymore, obviously. Now I do well in a business. But at the time, my philosophy was always I'm up against the smartest individuals in the world who want a job at Bain and McKinsey. I better be absolutely perfect because I don't want to lose for something I could have controlled. And that's the mindset that everyone else should have as well if you want those top jobs. If you want those top tops, right? And we got to watch out for those. Um, we got to watch out for things that can go against us. And TMI or too much information, Erica, you're so right. Because a lot of people will go into the personal. Like when you said, I'm from Montreal. Could, some people will go back to their, you know. It their was childhood. Nine, <laughs> it was nine wet day in, ni- I'm exaggerating, <laughs> 1990s four. But, you know, it is easy to think that. Because, you know, sometimes the interviewer comes across as very friendly. And we think they're our friend. They are not your friend. <laughs> not your <laughs> they friend. are doing a job. They are not your friend. In fact, they are looking for reasons to reject you. Sorry Correct. to say this. But they it's are. True. We don't have time. I mean, as a recruiter, I was like, it made my life a little easier if you screwed up. Because then I don't have to go back to you and, and come, you know, say anything more about second step, third step, fourth step. So don't give them a re- give them a reason to select you, right? And one of the ways you can do that is what we just said specific versus vague lauren thank you for um highlighting that and sandra says specific specific sp- 
specificity. See, we're all humans, and you know this is live when we are <laughs> specificity. Did you say that fast? It's a mouthful. Specificity. Spec- specificity. <laughs> oh my god! It's I don't know why I find I think it might just be easier in French. It's weird because French has so many more syllables. Specificity is the show me, don't tell me proof in the pudding. Beautiful, Sandra. Beautiful. I love that you shared that. It's so true. And it is a short window. Lauren, you're absolutely right. So, all right. Fantastic. And I see that we have a question here. Uh, Brendan, we're taking a little bit longer than what we thought would be 30 minutes. Is that okay for you? Yeah, yeah? yeah I got that. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Is it good to, Kush is asking, is it good to mention to, no, we just answered that. Kush, don't go there. If you think it has something to do with the job, let's say it's a day, you know, running a daycare center. Yes. If it has nothing to do with the job, uh, how many overs you did and how many wickets you have in cricket. I have people who talk about that. Please don't do that. It's Ooh. limited. Yeah. Real estate is limited. Please don't don't um, waste your time. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra, for telling us I'm not the only one who struggles with that word. Um Fantastic. And and Varsha even says there's so many times the questions are taken lightly, thinking that, oh, these are so common. I can, I'm going to breeze through them. But that is the difference. And I like what you said. If you really, really want that job, your extra effort is noticed because you're going up against the best. So beautiful. Um, I'm going to do a quick recap for all our lovely audience members here. First of all, if you're not watching, if you're not following Brendan, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Like, seriously, like, just go to LinkedIn, follow Brendan. You'll see the links to his YouTube channel, which you just follow because he's sharing all of the best stuff that he teaches anyway for free on YouTube. Master Talk. So you got to check that out. And, you know, he runs master classes and a lot of things very active on LinkedIn and also on Instagram. So everything, check it out on his LinkedIn profile. So if you're just joining us, welcome. We went through three questions and even if you've been watching from the beginning i highly recommend you go watch the replay because i know i will we talked about tell me about yourself a good way and a not so good way to answer right and i like that you said brendan there's no right or wrong it's about what works for you and gives you results it can't just work for you it has to give you the out like the result that you want we did tell me about yourself we did why should we hire you and we also talked about Why do you want to work for us? All of this together comes across in your content and delivery in interviews and to help you stand out. Brendan, one, um, so hopefully you guys are going to, what are you taking away? Please put this in the comments. What are you taking away? What are you going to practice? What are you going to do? Put this in the comments. And Brendan, for, uh, we're we're wrapping up now, but tell us about like, what do you want um, people to remember from our conversation? Absolutely. One sentence, everyone, and the one sentence is the following, is if you communicate 20% better than the other candidates you're applying against, you will stand out 100% of the time. If you communicate 20% better, not 100% better, 20% better than every other candidate, you will stand out 100% of the time. So take the extra steps to make sure your answers are structured, scripted, and prepped, and you'll stand out a hundred percent of the time. Wow. It's so important. I actually wrote this down. Um, If you communicate 20% better than every other candidate out there, you will stand out a hundred percent of the time. Brendan, could you explain this? Absolutely. So let's say you take two different candidates, right? So no, same CV, same skill set, same university, same everything. Yes. But candidate A sounds like candidate A in our interview. And candidate B is communicating just a bit better, puts that structure and puts that effort and puts a couple of nuffers. That person immediately will stand out. And this is why as humans, we remember exceptional communicators. We remember people like Barack Obama. We remember people like Michelle Obama. Individuals who are exceptional. But you don't need to be that level of exceptional. You just need to be better relative to every other candidate you're applying against. And that's really why you stand out all the time. Because sure, numbers are great and everything. But the way you communicate is how you get remembered. The way you tell your story like mine about rocket ship level success for other people that's a theme that nobody really does and that's why you stand out because of that okay beautiful good it's worth repeating this i know i've already said it if you communicate 20 percent, and by the way to get to that 20 percent 
I saw this uh, takeaway. Yes, Isabel, it's a, it's it's a oldie but goldie. Practicing, practicing. By by doing that on a regular basis, you're going to get to that 20%, and that is going to help you in so many ways to stand out. And by the way, this is not just, I heard you say this, but it's not just for job interviews, right? Networking conversations. There's so many times where a lot of similar questions come up when you're in a conference, now things are opening up, right? So, you know, we're chit-chatting, we have a, you know, a, a juice in our hand or a glass of wine. So, Brennan, what do you do? It's not that different. Obviously, you're not going to go into a, like a one, two, three, four, but, but, but the, structure, <laughs> the structure will be very similar, right? Yes, it's conversational. So a lot of the skills that we're going to be, we're learning from Brendan today are actually life skills. I wouldn't even say they're interviewing skills. They're communication skills and communication skills are life skills. So hopefully this was really, really helpful, Brendan. I want to say a big thank you to you for joining us today and for your time as always. Always a pleasure, Sonal. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. All right, everybody. This was Brandon Kumarasamy. Um, this was such a good, such a good session. Please make sure you share it with your friends and you tag your friends and anybody else that you think should be watching this. And next week, we're going to have another friend of mine who is in the communication space, who happens to be a lawyer. His name is Kalarele Shanaike, lives in London. He's a barrister. And we're going to be looking at employment rights and basic laws that you should know no matter where you live. I know that laws and jurisdictions depend on where you live, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go through some universal things together, which I think a lot of us don't know or we take for granted. And the previous week, we had Diana Alt, and we, if you didn't watch it, we, we talked about personality tests, another brilliant session that we had with Diana. So this is hashtag Supercharge Fridays. Follow the hashtag, follow Brendan, follow me. And until next time, take care of yourself. Thank you for being with us today. Have a lovely Friday and weekend.